Welcome to Bacon Shorts by Bacon Sports. This is episode 25. I'm Rob Cressy. Today we're going to talk about the NFL Week 14 lines with Industry Insider from Covers.com, my man, Jason Logan. Jason, who is your hashtag random athlete of the day? Well, I'm starting to get into the Christmas spirit now, so I figured I could tie this into my random athlete. Uh, Ebenezer Ecubon. Big Ooh. fan of Dickens' Christmas Carol. He's about as random as you're going to get. Uh, drafted by my Dallas Cowboys. Played for Cleveland and uh, Denver for a few years. I think he played about nine seasons in the league. But uh, Ebenezer. Ebenezer Scrooge Jackie Bond. So I will keep with this holiday theme with you. And I believe this guy played for the Dallas Cowboys. My hashtag random athlete of the day is Doug Jolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, name sounds familiar. Look at that. Doug Jolly. We're... So, like we do every week, we are going to be talking about uh, who the sharps, like who the public is on, who the bucks are sweating, or the books are sweating the most. But first, Jason, you've got a prop pick of the week that's a little bit different this week for us. Yeah, uh, it's not football related, but uh, this might be bigger than football, Rob. We're talking about Star Wars here. The new Star Wars movie comes out next Friday, and the sports books have had, ever since they announced that this movie was coming out, sports books have been throwing things out there. You know, they're. Uh, Academy Award nominations, who would play which character if they were to kind of upgrade characters, uh, not bring back the old cast, uh, as well as their opening weekend gross. And that's one of the big props out there now. Um, there's one out here, opening weekend gross, which is December 18th to December 20th in the, in the United States. Uh, and right now the favorite is between 20, uh, $226 million to $250.99 million. So to kind of put that into perspective, uh, Jurassic World set the new record this summer. It uh, beat out the first Avengers movie, and it grossed uh, $208,806,270. Uh, that topped Avengers, which was which was uh, $207.4 million. So, I mean, we're talking Star Wars. This is a cultural event. I mean, I, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go see it on the weekend, but you can't because it's sold out for like a week. So I don't think I'm going to be able to see this thing until the new year. Uh, so yeah, you can you can bet on that. Uh, 250, uh, 250 million to 275.9 million plus 350. Uh, I mean, you can go up as big as as um, 400, 1 million opening weekend gross. And then if you think it's going to flop, which it's not going to, regardless <laughs> of how bad the movie is, it's still going to haul it in. They even have odds for like 100, 100, 100 million, 101 million. You can bet on those. At plus twenty thousand dollar or plus twenty thousand odds, so it's a big, big week for the movies. You know you're gonna go see it, even if you're not a Star Wars fan. You're gonna go see it. So uh, I am an '80s kid who grew up on Star Wars, but on the the new ones, I have not really seen them. I actually don't have any shred of interest in going to see this movie. What? Are you a robot or something? Oh, robot. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just the the sports guy in me. Plus, just, I haven't followed Star Wars after the first three, which, oh wait, those aren't the first three, or however it is, just the ones I grew up with, and that's where I ended with Star Wars. The terrible rotten, well, you haven't, so you saw episodes one through three, and then you didn't see four, five, and six? Well, yeah, so I don't, like, I never saw the Jar Jar Binks thing, Oh, and... okay, okay, sorry, 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 so you saw those ones, yeah, yeah, this is kind of a continuation of the good ones. Oh. This isn't, this isn't a continuation of those terrible ones. Gotcha, because I don't know what the order is. Like, weren't the ones that I originally saw, aren't those the middle ones? Yeah, technically, those would now be the middle ones when they start releasing these new ones. So you saw episodes four, five, and six. Yes. It's like, it's like watching a football game, like, you know, starting in the third quarter and then going back and watching fourth quarter and then going and watching right. the first and second quarter and trying to figure it all out. All right, cool. So let's get no to... Jar Jar. There's no Jar Jar in these ones. <laughs> right. Certainly a positive. Let's get to... The sports betting for the week. Who are the Sharps on this week? They're on Detroit this week. Uh, Detroit opened plus one, St. Louis, and it's moved to minus three, which is a pretty significant line move. And if you look at Detroit, I mean, you, you, they're a miracle away from being 4-0 on this 4-0 run. So uh, the Sharp money on Detroit right now, and that's uh, that's pushed that line uh, past, got over the fence, and now it's sitting at a key number. And who are the public on this week? Uh, it's New England. New England, as always. I mean, when you can catch the Pats and they're only given, 
you know, like a field goal, that's going to lure a bunch of people in. But uh, I mean, uh, the, the books are in a tricky situation and we can get into this a little later um, with those later games. But the Pats are, are going to be the public team, especially with a short spread. And the game the books are sweating the most, a.k.a. the Bankers game. Uh, well, this the, the, the sweat and the Banker game are going to be different. Uh, the sweat is the Carolina game. All the money is going to be on Carolina. Uh, talking to books in Vegas, they're saying like 65 to 70 percent of every parlay that comes to the window is going to have Carolina tied to it. So that's going to dictate how the rest of the day goes. Once you get to the banker game, um, and this is what I was alluding to, you have some of the big public uh, teams. You've got New England playing the Sunday Nighter. You've got Green Bay, Green Bay playing Dallas at four. And then you uh, also have Denver playing at four. Those are three of the most publicly bet teams. So the, the schedule's not really doing bookmakers a favor. There's a lot of people that will have parlays going into that. And there's a lot of people that will just have parlays for the late game. So they'll have Denver and they'll have Green Bay and they'll tie that to uh, New England. So if those big faves come through, especially if Carolina comes through early, Denver comes through and Green Bay comes through, there, there's a lot of money is going to ride on that New England-Houston game Sunday night. Yes, yeah, certainly, and with it being the late action, I mean, it doesn't matter what that game is. That game's always important because you're either trying to hit the parlays or you're just trying to get your money back. It's the get even or get even deeper game. <laughs> Great way of saying that. All right, let's start with uh, a breakdown of each of the games, starting with probably the best game of the weekend. My Pittsburgh Steelers on the road taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals three-point favorites. Uh, for me, uh, earlier this year, Ben Roethlisberger came back against the Bengals. He was injured, did not have a good game. Andy Dalton led a game-winning drive. We know these teams, uh, they, they certainly are familiar with each other. Either one can win this game. Uh, the Steelers' offense is rolling. I'm hearing lots of just public chatter of, oh, you don't want to be playing the Steelers, but it seems like it's yet another people underestimating the Bengals, but there still is the respect level of the Bengals there, showing them as a three-point favorite and about 50-50 split on the action. Yeah, uh, kind of a cool trend that I, that I dug up here and looked at. Um, you were talking about, oh, you don't want to be playing Pittsburgh, and it seems like every year Pittsburgh starts to get rolling this time of year. I mean, they're, they're a veteran team. They've been to the Super Bowl. They, they know how to win. 8-0 uh, and o in their last eight. 8-0 uh, ATS in their last eight December games. Nice. So they, they come through, they've had that bankroll just before Christmas. So. And last year, the Steelers smoked the Bengals on the road in Cincinnati. I think it was like 41 to 20 or something like that. Uh, uh, it's, gonna, it's, it's really going to come down to if the Steelers can hit their big plays, uh, which is something that they really rely on. I think they have 36 passing plays of over 25 yards or more. And on Cincy's defense, they don't give much over the top. They've only had 16 passing plays go against them of 25 yards or more. So... It's a, it's, a, it's a nice little battle there if the Steelers can uh, can get over the top and hit some home runs, and maybe they put the Bengals on their heels. Steelers certainly need this game. Right now they're not even in the playoffs because of the tiebreakers with the Jets and the Chiefs. It All right, feel like a playoff unless the Steelers are in it, right? <laughs> well, yes, correct. All right, next game, the Eagles at home as one-point favorites taking on my adopted Buffalo Bills and – Man, the, the Eagles getting a little bit more respect. Well, the line not necessarily saying that because they beat they beat New England uh, with it only one being that Buffalo would be favored on a neutral field here. Uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Um, I mean, if you look at the, the kind of the stats breakdown of that Pats game, the Pats really did outplay them. Outside of kind of just some bonehead plays and some turnovers, the Pats did outgain them uh, quite substantially and, and outplayed them. Um, with this one, you know, obviously it's the Shady Bowl. Everyone's talking about that. And McCoy's return to Philly to play Chip Kelly. The one thing I looked at in my weekly mismatches column is that uh, the Bills, and we talked about this last week, the Bills are just dumb. They're a stupid team. They get a lot of penalties. Uh, and now they're going and playing a Philadelphia offense that just loves to hurry up. And speed creates chaos. And chaos creates mistakes. Um, Buffalo is actually the second most penalized team as far as calls accepted. And they're top in the league in yards, uh, just giving up free yards. Uh, if you look at Philly, Philly's actually been the fourth biggest beneficiary of, uh, of, or they've benefited the most, the fourth most in the league out of teams committing these bonehead penalties against them. Like I said, they're it's a speedy team. They make teams make mistakes. They like to get to the line, and, and they don't uh, they don't let you get set. So uh, I kind of see that maybe Buffalo is going to give up a, a lot of extra yards in this one just on those bonehead plays. 
I do like the play of Tyrod Taylor recently, which coincidentally comes with Sammy Watkins doing well. Uh, what I do hope is a lot more targets to Sammy Watkins, even though he's done well the last two games. I think his targets were 10 and then 4 or something like that. And then quickly for you on the Eagles, this DeMarco Murray potentially trying to get out of the Eagles to go back to the Cowboys talk? Come on back. Like, Open arms. So Open how arms. exactly would that work? That uh, they're, they're just going to drop DeMarco Murray and then he's just going to go sign with Dallas again? I guess they would have to waive him. I don't think Philadelphia, Philadelphia paid a hefty sum for him. I don't see it happening. Right. Yeah, me either. That's, that's just dumb. All right. Yeah. Uh, as we mentioned, a huge game this week. The, Pan the undefeated Panthers at home taking on the Falcons. Panthers favored by eight points. And certainly the public is going to love an undefeated team with the Panthers. The Panthers smoked the Falcons last year. Atlanta in an absolute tailspin after starting the season out 5-0. and I think they're, uh, they've lost five out of their last six games. And just things are not good with Matt Ryan. They've got... They've got Julio Jones and no one else to throw to. Uh, Devontae Freeman hasn't been as good the last month as he was when he went on that just crazy touchdown spurt. Uh, what do you got going on this? Uh, well, one thing I looked at last week in my Muff Punk column, um, I was looking at kind of the better bets in December. Um, teams that come into December with a really good ATS record and, and teams that come into to December with a really good straight up record. And they drastically decline, like drastically decline. And even narrowing that down, uh, and here's a note from my column last week, was there's three other teams that had entered week 13 with unblemished records and with an ATS record of nine or two or better. Those undefeated teams, which were the 80, uh, the, sorry, the 85 Chicago Bulls, or Chicago Bulls, Chicago Bears, uh, 91 Washington Redskins, the 2007 uh, New England Patriots, and they closed out their schedule, a combined 11 and three straight up mark in those final four weeks of the season. Um, but they were just five and nine ATS in those final games too. And these are these we're talking about the best teams that were among the best bets. Carolina fits this mold, and then they come out last week and they don't cover against the Saints. Uh, up against a tough game in the Saints against the Saints. So uh, this trend is kind to pick up a little more steam again with Carolina in this position. Yeah, I'm certainly looking to play against Carolina a little bit. Just I just feel like there's going to be a little bit more of a squeeze as they keep going on. They've Certainly Absolutely. exceeded expectations right there. And when, when the public's all on it, I think there might be some opportunities for value. Yeah, yeah I, w I was looking at like their average spread through that, through that uh, entering into December, and their average spread was like minus three or something silly. Like it might have even been under a field goal, uh, which is ridiculous. And they, up until that point, they had only been giving, I think they gave five, five points, maybe more than five points twice in that span, which is nuts for a team that's been that dominant and that good. Um, and so uh, and looking at those past undefeated teams that came into December, uh, those spreads just shot right up. We're talking like a difference of like almost a field goal on their spreads compared to what they were facing through the first uh, 13 weeks or 12 weeks of the season. And speaking of the Panthers, Ted Ginn has the worst hands I have ever seen <laughs> in my life. Shout out to my boy G Hunt. He's a Panthers fan. Watching that game, Ted Ginn dropped like two touchdowns. No one even near him. Absolutely disgusting. Got to stay out of the theater. <laughs> All right. Next game, the Cleveland Browns and Johnny Football are favored by two and a half over the surging Blaine Gabbert-led San Francisco 49ers. Kind of a curious line here because should the Browns be favored over anyone, especially since Blaine Gabbert has been better than Colin Kaepernick, uh, actually playing significantly better than expected uh, no Joe Hayden for the Browns. Their secondaries has just been getting torched. So my first thought is, man, I like the value in the 49ers here. What am I not seeing with the Browns being favored by two and a half? Sure. It's, it's a tough travel spot again. Again, they're going uh, east. They're on the road for the second straight week. And um, this is a team that doesn't win a whole lot right now. So, you know, they're, they're, in a, they're in a letdown spot after that big upset against Chicago. Um, a cool a cool trend, uh, Niners 1-5 in five ATS in their last six games off a win. So this is a team that is susceptible to that letdown spot. So but so we, we've got that. So what can we put on the Cleveland side of things? Because I think that's where my thought goes a little bit more. It's like, all right, I completely understand. I think this is actually the third out of four games in the road for the 49ers. Uh, the Browns, they've just showed me nothing to make me believe that 
they can cover it. They can even win this game outright. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's almost one of these games where you're not necessarily capping which team is going to win. You're handicapping which team is going to lose. Right. And uh, kind of weighing the bad against the bad and who's, you know, who's a stinkier team. Um, when you get to these situations, you know, you don't always have to bet them. So you might just want to flush this one away. You're like, wait a second, how can I not bet on a game? No, I'm just kidding. Ah, I know, it's tough. All right. Tough, but uh, it's it's a rotten game. You don't want this one. Chicago Bears at home, favored by three and a half over the Washington Redskins. And boy, did the Bears give one away last week. Robbie Gold sitting there and misses the field goal. I actually had the Bears minus seven in that game. Uh, so I was actually rooting for the missed field goal. And, well, it didn't matter because they weren't going to cover seven in overtime. Uh, just disappointing because we'd seen a lot of positive momentum out of this Bears team Lately, it certainly would have helped. Uh, I think typically people, uh, I don't know what you think about Kirk Cousins on the road for the Redskins. Yeah, they've been, I mean, they've been a completely different team on the road and at home. Uh, we've seen that in their record. Um, but, you know, Dallas went in there and, and took one from them on Monday night, which felt good. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Um, with this game, Chicago, I've been kind of tracking the weather, and there's some nasty weather this week across the league. Um, and in Chicago, the winds are going to be howling. And when it comes to sports betting, at least in football betting, wind is the most destructive element that you can have as far as trying to get a gauge on the point spread. Um, you know, passing games are impacted by it. The kicking game, field position, you know, where we're talking about guys missing field goals, the field goal game. And sometimes when you get into these, uh, these wind games and you sometimes have a coach say, okay, well, it's terrible like we can't kick into this so maybe we'll go for it on a, a short you know short fourth down maybe we'll go for the two-point conversion rather than trying to kick this longer you know new field goal so it's uh you know kind of take that into account it, it will impact field position it will impact passing um and and most of all it will impact kicking so sometimes depending on how you see it there could be value to the over because teams will go for it more they'll go for the two-point conversion and they'll go for it on fourth down because they just can't play in the wind uh, over under in this game, 43 and a half. Yeah, it, it, depending on it, there's, it says possible thunder sh showers. And if the weather comes in like it, like it may, um, you know, it, the, the total may come down a bit. So, All right, next game, St. Louis Rams at home, three-point dogs to the Detroit Lions in a game where heavy action is coming in on the Detroit Lions. And what a brutal, we already talked about it last week, uh, what a brutal loss. For the Lions, uh, just tough. There, there's not a lot going good for the Rams right now as a whole. Uh, where, where are you at on this? I think it's, there's two things you need to weigh. You know, Do the Lions pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and start playing like the team that won three in a row before this? You know, They're a miracle Hail Mary from, from a win over Green Bay. So what you see is what maybe you know, them being favored by three is what the line would have been had they have won that game. Um, and a lot of the Sharps are coming in on the line saying, you know, that was the case. The public sees it as a loss. You know, they see it, oh, Detroit lost. And, you know, are they are they crushed because of that? You know, it was a big game, big matchup against the, the Packers. You know, can can they pick themselves up and dust themselves off? Uh, so it's kind of two things to weigh. The Sharp guys have made their opinion known. So uh, it's, it's really up to the betting markets now that that line has moved. I mean, minus three on the road. Uh, this is a Detroit team that has been just severely two-faced all season. So, And interestingly with the Rams, Todd Gurley has been uh, vastly different in the last month than we saw earlier in the season. It comes with probably the lack of quarterback play, la uh, tough competition and everything. So just an interesting thing to note for them. All right, next game. I mean, teams get smart to him. Teams get tape on him, right? I mean, he was right. kind of a mystery heading into it. And uh, then they see what he can do, and they just start you know, stacking as many guys in the box as they can. Next game, and this line was certainly interesting to me. <clears throat> Kansas City Chiefs at home, 10.5-point favorites, taking on the Chargers. And I know everything's in complete disarray in San Diego. But, man, divisional game, 10.5 seems like a lot of points. I know the Chiefs are currently rolling right now. But yeah. is there is there value in this? Because when my first reaction was, man, at ten and a half, I like the Chargers, and I'm just gonna hope for the best. But uh, that's also just me saying I like getting more than ten in a division game. With <laughs> Phil Rivers. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is an offense that you know it can explode despite the injuries that they've had. They can put it, still put up some points, uh, but I mean, Kansas City is just playing out of their minds right now, and, they, and it's on both sides of the ball. I mean, the defense looks great, the offense looks great. They're running the ball, they're passing, they're hitting those, you know, their prototypical kind of short passes, and then they're hitting Macklin on those big games. One thing they looked at this week, I uh, was digging up some uh, uh, future old futures odds uh, where they open. And with Kansas City, they got as big as plus 30,000 to win the Super Bowl when they started. I believe they started one in five straight up. Um, and uh, they were plus 30,000 after that last loss. And now after this winning streak, they've actually gone down to plus 3,000. Now they're still, you know, a fairly long shot to win the Super Bowl. But that's a substantial move over just, you know, half a season. Um, and to look at them and say, okay, well, now they're, you know, they're playing for the wild card, but they still do have a shot at the AFC West title. If Denver stumbles, I think I believe Denver has to lose all their games. Um, but I mean, if you want to take a flyer on them, they've got the they've got the schedule to do it. They play San Diego, Cleveland, Baltimore, and Oakland, oh. which are just bad teams. Uh, and those teams have a combined record of fourteen and thirty-four right now, straight up. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for a long shot to come cashing in, you know, Chief Super Bowl odds still pretty good right now. They're not plus thirty thousand. You know, that's a good chunk of your mortgage right there if you get the right money down on it. And uh, I, I believe that there's still like a, it might even be like plus 2,000 or something like that to win the division. So there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of value there. I and mean, they're hot. I mean, but are they peaking too soon? That's the other thing. Well, I look forward to betting against Andy Reid and Alex Smith in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next game, Tampa Bay Buccaneers getting some respect as four-point home favorites over the Saints, and the interesting thing about this is getting that extra point above just the, the three, saying that on a neutral field, this Buccaneers team, which we've seen some positive developments out of them, I think they've certainly exceeded expectations. They still have a shot at the playoffs. This Saints team going nowhere. Uh, they had their shot last week against the Panthers. It was, boom, we're up big to start the game, and then... Just came back down to earth there. Uh, Jameis Winston, there is going to be some inconsistency with the rookie quarterback. He is learning. Uh, that would be the one apprehension I would have on this. But I don't trust the Saints. Uh, certainly an interesting game uh, for the Buccaneers. Won that for a young developing team. You've got to win a game like this. Yeah, if you look at the Saints, I mean, that matchup against Carolina, that was kind of their Super Bowl. They knew they weren't going to the playoffs, and they – I just want to play the role of spoiler, and they got close, but they couldn't finish it off. Uh, with Tampa Bay, I mean, Jameis Winston is, is improving. He's playing well, and you're seeing that, and he's, he's playing tough. A uh, big thing for Tampa Bay is that they're getting healthier in the trenches. They, they've got an offensive lineman back. They've got a guy, another guy in starting. And then they also get Gerald McCoy, and they get jo uh, George Johnson back on defense, on the defensive line. And while those defensive linemen aren't really quantified into the spread, when you have cluster injuries, so when you have, like, two or three key guys go down on the off, or these defensive lines and offensive lines, that's when odds makers start to kind of factor that in. And now Tampa Bay is getting guys healthy at those key positions. So uh, look out for the Bucks. They could have a nice strong finish. And, and they're talking playoffs in Tampa Bay. So Worth noting, over-under on this game at 50 and a half, highest on the board this week. That seems high. Right. Uh, yes. That's all it, Saints. That's just all Saints, you know. And that's right there, but that seems that seems like that. This actually qualifies for my division game 44 and a half over under. Take the under bet, uh, the trend that I've been doing uh, most recently. All right. All right, next game, we've got the New York Jets at home as seven point favorites taking on the Titans. And sometimes I sound like a broken record, but I am not a believer in Ryan Fitzpatrick as the season goes on. I know since he shaved the beard the last two games, he's been doing well. Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall, they've been doing stellar this year. Uh, I heard Wilbon on PTI groaning about the Bears getting rid of Brandon Marshall because he continues to be productive. The Titans, what a victory over the Jaguars last week. Marcus Mariota with an 80-plus yard touchdown run, seeing positive things out of them. I know that I cannot trust Ryan Fitzpatrick in in a spot and for me uh i want to take the titans even though the jets have proven to have a good defense and a better team this year for me i just had this little thing in me saying 
How will you feel when Ryan Fitzpatrick throws three or four interceptions in a game, which inevitably happens because we know it happens every single year? Yeah, and the one thing about this game, too, is uh, it's seven and a half, that little half-point hook, so it, it almost it reeks of backdoor cover, which I know is you know one of your right. greatest victories and one of your worst losses is these backdoor covers. But one thing I will tell you about the Jets is that they, they close it out in fourth quarters. Uh, they're averaging over, uh, the last three games, they're averaging over 11 points in the fourth quarter. And then if you look at Tennessee, Tennessee has been one of the worst fourth quarter teams uh, in football. Giving I think they're on the season, they're giving up over nine. And then if you look at their past uh, three games, they've given up substantial amounts of points in the fourth quarter. And the, the one, uh, I think the Oakland game was the one where they only gave up a touchdown in the fourth quarter, but it was actually the game-winning touchdown. So uh, an impactful score, nonetheless. So I mean, if if you are playing the Jets or you're looking at this spread and, and you're kind of you're dreading that half point hook, maybe have a little faith in uh, clean shaven Ryan Fitzpatrick. The thing that worries me the most about the Titans, their defense has gotten torched each of yeah. the last two games. Uh, not a trend that I like. If you're going to be backing yeah. them, yeah, it's the defense really hasn't lived up to kind of the hype. Um, but I mean, Tennessee's not. You know, they're they would. They put it on Jacksonville last week. Jacksonville's got a respectable defense. I, I don't know if they can do it again. All right, next game, Houston Texans at home. Three and a half point dogs to the beat up New England Patriots. 80-20 uh, rule in effect with over 80% of the action on the Patriots. This is very much the public seeing, oh my God, the Patriots only giving up three and a half points. That's nothing against Brian Hoyer and the Texans. For me, Taking a home team, getting more than a field goal, 80-20 rule. We just saw the Patriots, uh, they're human. Uh, so uh, what, what do we got here with, with a big game? Uh, one thing that I looked at in my mismatches column this week is uh, as far as starting field position goes, average starting field position, the Patriots are among the best teams. They, they start their drives around the 30, and they only allow opponents – uh, to start their drives around their tw- own 23-yard line, which I believe is like second lowest in the league. If you look at Houston, Houston is one of the, I think they're 28th in average starting field position for their drives. Uh, they've got a ho-hum kind of return team, the Patriots, as far as their kick coverage, among the best teams in the league. So uh, Houston's Houston could find themselves pinned back, and if they want to get into a shootout with uh, the Patriots, I don't know if that's going to uh, pan out too well for them since they're going to be starting so far back. And Houston, certainly a better team at home than they are on the road, which we saw last week when they lost to the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, Brady and Belichick have another week to kind of figure it out what they're going to do. No Gronk, but, uh, you know, these are the two kind of the smartest brains in football right now. So, I, it, it, Patriots, anytime you can get the Patriots and you only have to give three points, that's not too bad. All right, next game is off the board. Jacksonville at home, taking on Indianapolis. Uh, don't know who's starting for the Colts. Is it Matt Hasselback? Is it, man, who's their backup? It's probably not Charlie Curtis Whitehurst. Painter, Charlie is it? Charlie Whitehurst is their backup, I believe. Who is it? Charlie Whitehurst. Oh, Clipboard Jesus. Yeah, uh, dude from Clemson. Right? Yes. That's where he went, Clemson? Yeah. Uh, is it, do you have anything on this, even though we don't have a spread? Um, I've seen plus one. I, 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 it looks like Hasselbeck's going to play. I think, believe he practiced this week as well, too, and I, I think he's going to play. Um, this this is a kind of an interesting thing. Um, CG Technology, uh, which operates a bunch of sports books in Las Vegas, in the spring, they release odds on every single game from week one to week 16. So if you go back to the spring and you look at this, this game actually opened Colts minus six, thinking that Colts were going to be dominant again. Andrew Luck was going to be there and everything was going to be happy and joyous in, in Indianapolis. Not so much. Um, Colts have actually won 16 in a row versus their AFC South rivals. Uh, that's any AFC South team. And uh, they're 18, 7, and 1 ATS in the last 26 versus divisional foes. So uh, it's a shorter spread than what they expected because, you know, half the team is not there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting move. All right, next game, we've got the Packers at home taking on the Cowboys. The line I'm seeing is Packers minus six and a half. And that seems, that's interesting to me. And I know the line has gone down. I think it was over seven when it, it was started. Seven and a half, yeah. Certainly curious considering Matt Castle is the quarterback for the Cowboys. But 
I looked, the Cowboys' defense the last four games has been significantly better. Uh, mm-hmm. I would have a hard time backing Matt Castle. Uh, the Packers still haven't put it together, even though they won against the Lions. Uh, for all intents and purposes, that should have been a loss. But just looking at the game breakdown, they were down 17 nothing, continuing this trend of what is going on with this Packers offense right now. Yeah, I mean, if you look at their over their last three games, they've only averaged like 210 passing yards per game, which is kind of nuts. The offensive line uh, is really banged up. They've been shuffling guys over and over and over again. With Dallas's defense last week against Washington, they went blitz happy, and it's something that Rod Marinelli doesn't do very often. Actually, they were the the least aggressive, the most passive defense in the NFL. But he kind of unleashed the dogs on Washington. They got good pressure on Cousins, made some bad throws, got some sacks, which is good. I think they only have like maybe 29 or 30 sacks on the season, which isn't, you know, a lot. Um, then, you know, can you do this against Aaron Rodgers? Can he make, you know, will he make you pay with the deep ball? And the deep ball is not there for them right now. So I could see Dallas maybe dialing up the blitz again. I know Jerry Jones was really happy to see that happen uh, on Monday Night Football. You know, what Jerry wants, Jerry gets. So if Jerry says, yeah, Rod, blitz the crap out of them, then they're going to be blitzing the crap out of them. Uh, it's one of those things I talked about in my mismatches column uh, this week was, Dallas could come with the blitz again, and, and Green Bay kind of sits in that same uh, mold that Washington did. You know, they, the deep ball threat is not really there, and uh, and they've got a banged up offensive line. So, do you see uh, if the Cowboys have a shot, maybe a defensive or a return touchdown? Uh, oh, Darren I mean, McFadden with, getting yeah. some run. But with with this Dallas team. They need the defense to make plays. They need the defense to grab interceptions, which they don't do a lot. Uh, and to beat a team like the Packers, even though as bad as they're playing and and you, and you are playing in Lambeau, it's you know you're you're gonna need some help. This offense, you know, Matt Castle, he's making some better throws, like that nice toss to Des Bryant uh, late in the game there uh, on Monday was you know great shades of last year's catch in Green Bay. That was a catch. Right. Anyway. Sour grapes. Uh, this will be fun to watch, at least, uh, as a Cowboys fan. Speaking of that Monday night game, how atrocious was that Deshaun Jackson punt return, which led to a fumble? For you being a yeah. Cowboys fan, you're like, this is the greatest thing in the world. I, I, I was standing up at the time and just being kind of like, what is he doing? And then when he fumbled, I was like, oh, yes, because I'm not a big Deshaun Jackson fan at all. Nice. All right, two games left. Uh, one that has uh, 80-20 rule written all over. Ravens at home taking on the Seahawks. Seahawks 10-point road favorites. Don't know who's the quarterback for Baltimore, if it's going to be the banged-up Matt Schaub or Jimmy Clausen. Nonetheless, Seahawks are rolling right now. Of course I can see why everyone wants to back the Seahawks. They've been crushing it on the offensive side recently. The Ravens yeah. have been horrible. Their offense is garbage. Uh, their run defense, surprisingly, has been much better. Uh, there's been the emergence of Doug Baldwin. Thomas Rawls hasn't missed a step with Marshawn Lynch being out. It's tell me why in the world, other than 80-20 rule, I should even consider the Ravens other than, hey, you're getting 10 at home with a, uh, a Harbaugh-led coaching staff who uh, probably hasn't thrown in the towel because – they're a good John Harbaugh's a good coach. Yeah, um, the Ravens have they've kind of bucked up on defense a, a little more. They are playing a little tougher, and they've been a really good second half team this year. Um, but I mean, it's the Seahawks and the way the Seahawks are playing right now. Like this is a tough travel spot for Seattle. They've got to go all the way across the country, and they're looking at bigger and better things down the road. You know, they can probably go into this game and maybe look past the Ravens a bit and still get the win. Um, so, like I said, tough travel spot, maybe a look-ahead spot. Um, I looked at the Seattle Super Bowl odds this week, and they actually opened before last year's Super Bowl was even played. They opened as a 5-1 to one favorite to win Super Bowl 50. Um, and then they were as high as 16-1 to one, um, before this, this winning streak. Uh, and now they've had those odds trimmed in half, so you can get them at 8-1 to one to win the Super Bowl, which I actually think is a pretty good fly or a pretty, pretty good price to pay right now for Seattle the way that they're playing and, and the, you know, momentum is everything. So if they can kind of build this momentum and keep rolling, they get into the postseason, uh, they get that wild card spot and, you know, look out, this is a team that knows how to win um, when you get to that playoffs. 
Yeah, for those that play DFS on DraftKings, Doug Baldwin is dirt cheap, and I can't believe we are actually trusting Doug Baldwin as a good, legitimate number one wide receiver. But the last four games, that dude has been stellar. Yeah. All right, last game on the board. Dolphins at home, one-point dogs to the New York Giants, a team that has given up, lost the game four times despite leading with less than a minute to go in the game. Most in, time for most in NFL history, which is just ridiculous. It kills me being a Steelers fan. Steelers really needed a Jets loss there. And it really, that interception by Eli when they're up 20 to 10, I'm okay with going for it there. But man, throwing that interception into double coverage where that guy wasn't even open, just things could have been so much vastly different for this Giants team. You've got to love it as a Cowboys fan because you guys are still oh, alive. Love. It's great. Yeah, my old, my old man's a Giants fan, which is why I'm a Cowboys fan. And uh, this season has just taken years off his life. I feel sorry for him. Poor, poor dad. But, I mean, now you feel my pain because the Cowboys have been through tons of these on their own as well. Um, but one thing we talked about last week was the Dolphins switching their offensive coordinator. And this is a team that actually they ran the ball fewer – uh, then and they still uh, on their season average, they run the ball fewer than uh, all but one team. They only ran the ball like 34 percent of the time on their offensive sets. Last week they ran the ball over 54 percent of the time. Uh, they said they were going to get back to the run. Uh, so I mean, this is this is a team that's going to kind of grind it out, uh, not take big shots down the field, and kind of give value to the under, especially with these Monday night games. If you want to wait it out, this Monday night total will probably go up because the public loves to pay, play the over on the uh, standalone primetime games. Get a little extra on the total. Come back on the under as late as you can. Um, <laughs> just digging up stats for this game. The Giants are one in, I think it was one in five in their last six Monday night football appearances. But before you go running and putting money on the Dolphins, the Dolphins are 0 and 6 in their last six Monday night football appearances. So maybe just forget about the spread. Maybe focus on the total for this one. Nice. Uh, I love the emergence of Devontae Parker in the last two games for the Dolphins. Good to see him coming on late. So, uh, all right, Jason, time for you to drop some plugs. What's cooking with covers.com and the articles you guys are doing? Sure. It's uh, always a big weekend now. I mean, everything's going. Hockey's going. Basketball's going. College basketball's going. Got Army Navy this weekend. That's always a, an entertaining game. And especially if you got some money on the, on the game, it's always a little bit uh, tastier. Uh, NFL, I'll have my muff punt column coming out. Uh, I've got my mismatches column up there now. Uh, there's a big UFC fight this weekend. Those, it's been a big week for UFC. Um, and then we're getting ready for bowl season too. So we'll have some coverage uh, for the bowl games, some stats and notes and stuff uh, heading right into bowl season. So it's a very exciting time. You got to follow us on Twitter at covers.com. Come to covers, check out our editorial content, our stats and matchups, live odds where, you know, we're tweeting out who the sharps are playing, the biggest line moves, uh, where books are expecting spreads ago, which is always helpful information. And it's all free. So come to covers, win some bets. Awesome. So Jason and I do this NFL betting podcast every Friday. So make sure to check back Friday afternoons when we drop this bad boy. Jason, going to be an absolutely fantastic week. Yet again, thanks for coming on the show, my friend. Thank you. All right. Boom shakalaka.